Hello everyone, can you all hear me? <clears throat> can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, let us start. So in the last class, uh, we studied till the part of uh, I told you to take some screenshots, right? Did you take those screenshots in the last class? Did you take those screenshots, students? Yes or no? Can I get some responses in the form of voice messages? Yes. Okay, okay, fine. So now uh, we'll be continuing to the next section, right? So, please, uh, someone speak up, okay? If I ask, only one of you speak up. I don't have any problem with that. Just speak up when I have something. Did you see my, are you able to see my screen? Guys, you able to see my screen? Are you guys able to see my screen, students? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So uh, now let us go to the topic analysis of slab decks. Now look, in the last class, we discussed an important factor, design coefficient of flexural members, right? So this is the formula for flexural members and these are the values. Now if you remember, I told you uh, guys to remember some one formula. So now, what we'll do is, in the analysis of slab decks, now look, reinforced concrete slab decks are used for small span culverts that are generally spanning in one direction. And hence, the moments due to death and live load are critical in the longitudinal direction, that is, the direction of moving load. Bridge deck slabs simply supported on other sides have been designed for IRC load specified in class AA or A depending upon the importance of classification of the bridge. In case of reinforced concrete, tubing bridge, the deck slab is supported along the longitudinal and lateral direction by main and post gutter since the slabs in such cases have to be Analyze for movements developed in the longitudinal and lateral directions. So now look, that the load patterns are different for different kind of loading, right? So we have IRC class A, class AA, class B, okay? So on the basis of this load patterns, we have different design elements, how a bridge structure will be designed or something like that, right? Now, Now, look. There, if you can see here, suppose the bridge decks slabs that are simply supported on one, one side have to be designed for IRC loads specified as class AA or A. Okay? Now, as per those classifications, the IRC class AA or class A, 
the bridge decks left that are simply supported on either side those have to be designed in that way fine now if you can see in case of rcc concrete t beam bridge and slab with this the deck slab is supported along the longitudinal and lateral directions by main and cross girders so in case of simply supported we have to design the bridges depending upon the different irc loads like class aa or class on the other hand if it is a t beam bridge then we have to find out the moments that are developed in longitudinal and lateral directions okay. now with different support conditions we have to do the slab analysis right Here are the analysis of slab with different support conditions. Okay, number one, <coughs> solid slabs that are standing in one direction. Now for solid slab spanning in one direction, can you tell me what is one solid slab spanning in one direction? Can you tell me what is one way slab? This is done one way slab, right? Can you tell me? Anyone please volunteer and say me what is slab spanning in one direction? Can anyone say me what is slab spanning in one direction? Can anyone say me? I don't have any response from anyone. So why don't you say me? Why don't you say me that what is one way slab and what is two way slab? What is slab spanning in one direction and what is slab spanning in two directions? Just tell me about it.
No idea. No idea. One way slab has uh, two support and no, 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 no. Two way slab has uh, four support. No. It is dependent on the L by V ratio. Okay. In one way slab, the L by V ratio is greater than two. Fine. Is it clear? In two way slab, it is less than two. Is it clear now? So now, look, for a single concentrated load in case of slab running in one direction, the dead moments are directly computed by as well. Slab should be simply supported within the gearings. So, So this is what is called solid slab only for now. Look. The live loads of vehicles are considered to be transferred through Wheels are concentrated for uh, considered as concentrated loads that are spread over compact area of tire to the brick slab. The bending moment per unit width of the slab developed by concentrated loads on solid slabs may be calculated by assuming the width Of slab considered as effective in resisting the bending moment due to concentrated load. Now, in case of precast, can you tell me what is precast slab? Do you know what is precast slab? Look, for precast lab, the precast means what? It has been made in some other places and it is brought to the site. Okay, that is known as precast lab. Now, for single concentrated load, the effective width may be calculated by this equation. C equal to Kx, 1 minus X by L plus BW. Now, look, BC is what? The effective width of slab due to physical load X. L is the effective span. X is the center of gravity from load from nearer support. BW is the breadth. Hmm. And A is the constant depending upon the ratio D by L. Okay. So the value of K for different ratios of D by L is compiled in table 3.5. Now these are the values of constant K. Now just take a screenshot of this because these all are important for your exam. Have you taken the screenshot? Tell me. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So after this, we discuss two or more concentrated load in the line in the direction of the span. So these are the different cases. So for the first cases, this is K one minus X by L plus BW. Okay. Now for the second case. 
produce two or more concentrated loads in the line in the direction of the spare. When two or more concentrated loads are positioned in the line in the direction of the span, then the bending moment per unit which of the slabs shall be calculated separately, okay? So separately for each load according to which appropriate effective width of slab as specified under single process. Okay? That means what? The bending moment per unit width of the slab will be calculated separately for each load. That means bending moment calculation will be different for different types of loads. Huh. Now, coming to the next one. This is the another case, two or more concentrated loads that are not li in line in the direction of the span. Okay. Now we'll go to the next one. This is called solid cantilever slab. Okay, I don't have any problem if you interrupt me in the in between, okay? And just tell me during if my voice is cracking or something like that. Someone just now told me if my voice is cracking and it's clear at times. Is it cracking still? Can anyone please respond? Is my voice still cracking? Can anyone please respond? Is my voice still cracking? Please pick up. Is it cracking? Hello. Is it not audible to any, all of you? Hello. Yes. Yes, Sunaini, dear, I am looking for. Dear. Aha. Yes, sir. Double rank. I am not hearing anyone. Can anyone? Sir, Sunaba, yes, sir. Okay, fine. You are hearing, no? Those who have written yes, they are hearing, no? Fine, fine. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So if it is like cracking sometimes, maybe it might be an approach issue on your part also, on your place also. Try to move to a different place. And if it is cracking for all of you, then it's my issue to so tell me about. Okay. Just unmute yourself and then you can tell. Okay. I don't have any problem. Now, for a solid cantilever slab, the effective width of dispersion in the direction parallel to the support edge, a simple concentrated load. This one, C equal to 1 term to H plus BW. Now, if you see here,
if you can see here this is be okay this is be so be is effective what which okay so this is be for your convenience you know better you buy this book then it will be comfortable for you to go also to study okay try to buy this book i might find the link then i'll send it to you now if you can see here this is for the solid can deliver that now this thing let me explain so this is one effective width of dispersion right that means what suppose this is the width of the load pipe now if you see these are the layers so now if you see here this way So if you can see here, okay, so this is the load and it will be dispersed like this. Now this width, now suppose this is the part where, hello, can you all hear me? Can you all hear yes, me? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. So now this is the part where the vehicle will be going, right? This is the part where the vehicle will be going. Now this, look. Now this is the part of the bottom of the road. Nah? So if this vehicle is moving here like this, then the load will be dispersed here in this way. And this is denoted by what? B and E. Okay. So now this is the B. That means B is the effective width. Now B E is what? Different for different values. Now for solid plenty levers left, this is the value of B. Okay. So now how will you find out this one? Uh, this is how it is being found out. Okay. So these are the different criteria. Now if you can see.
the effective weight that is the BE, it should be what? It should be limited to one third of the length of the cantilever slab that is measured in parallel to the support. That means the slab which is present. Now, if you measure, why is my voice always failing? Tell me if it is cracking now also, okay? Now for a solid cantilever slab, if you can see it, the effective width should be limited to one third of the length of the cantilever slab and which is measured parallel to the support, okay? Now when the concentrated load is placed near to one end of the extreme ends, the effective width should not exceed the above value, nor half the above value plus the distance of concentrated load from the near extreme ends. These are conditions which are okay, but the main thing is that we have to remember B E equal to 1.2x plus BW. This is the formula that we have to remember, okay. So now this are what it denotes actually for solid cantilever slab okay now those who are like willing to note it down you can note it down or you may get the video in the link also no problem with that but if you want to note it down you can note it down also so is my voice still cracking now someone please pick up and say no sir it's clear it's clear now right okay Yes, if it is cracking, then please interrupt me and tell me, okay? Then I'll check my network connections, fine? Now, if you see here, Now, dispersion of loads along span. First of all, it was what? Solid cantilever slab, right? Then, dispersion of loads along the span. Now, along the span of the bridge, the loads will be dispersed in this relation. V equal to x plus 2 d by h. So, V is the what? Effective length of dispersion along the span. Now, look. This was... This was what in the direction of moving of the vehicle and now this one is what along the span okay so now if it is along the span then we have this reaction the relation v equal to x plus 2 d by h fine so these are the relations the most important is b equal to 1.2x plus bw this is the most important now if you go down dispersion of loads that is spanning in two directions now dispersion of loads spanning in two directions these will be you know computed by using design curves that are developed by pitots and Westergaard's okay now this Pitot's curve and Westergaard's curves these are the very important curves so this curves what I'll do is I'll share in the group okay I have this from the book also but then I'll just share it with you huh? so if you can take a printout it will be better for you people for solving the numericals okay so these are the pitot's curve the dispersion of labs for slabs spanning in two direction what is being done is we'll have pitot's and westergaard's okay 
So now, So let us do one thing. 